How to install a Jenkins agent on Windows. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.332.2. And attached to this controller is, well, nothing. That's what we're going to be doing is we're going to be attaching a Windows agent to this Linux-based Jenkins controller. But before we start setting that up, we need to do a little bit of research. And what we need to take a look at is what version of Java is running our controller. And the reason why we need to know that is we want to make sure that the version of Java that's running the agent process on the agent is the same or really near the same version of Java that is also running the Jenkins process on the controller. So we can figure this out one of two ways. I can go into Manage Jenkins, go down to System Information, and then look for Java Home. And we can see here that we're running Timurin 11 JDK. But I've also installed the version column plugin. And if we click on Build Executor Status, the built-in node, which is our controller, we can also see here that we're running 11.0.15. So we know that we want to run Java 11, if we can get it, 11.0.15 on our agent, so it matches the version of Java that's running our controller process. Now, before we go over and check out our agent, we need to set up our agent definition on the controller. So let's go ahead and click on new node. I'm going to give it the name of Windows. I'm gonna make it a permanent agent and click on create. Now, as I was preparing, I know where I want things to live on my agent. So in my case, I want my remote root directory to be d slash tools slash Jenkins dash agent. For my label, I'm going to use Windows. But since I gave it the name of Windows, that's going to be the default label. So actually, I'm going to remove this label. For usage, I'm going to say only build jobs matching this node. That's fine. And then for the launch method, I'm going to leave it launch agent by connecting it to the controller. So that gives us the ability to have this inbound agent from Windows into this controller. Now, one more thing that I want to do is I want to go ahead and click on use WebSocket. If I did not click on Use WebSocket, then what I would have to do is I would have to open up a port to this controller to make a persistent TCP connection. By using WebSocket, I'm able to leverage the web connection just through the front end. So that's really what I want to do. That's going to help simplify the connection process to my controller. So I will just go ahead and click Use WebSocket. And once we click on that, you can see that that message goes away. Now, before we leave this, let's go ahead, scroll down to the bottom and click on Save. And we can see here that we have a Windows agent set up. It has a red X because that's what I would expect because we're gonna be connecting from the agent back up into the controller. But when I click on Windows, it gives us information that we're going to need to use when we are setting up our agent. And let's go ahead and go over to our Windows agent. And for our example today, I have a Windows 7 Pro agent. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up File Explorer and if you think back to just a few moments ago, when we set up our remote directory, I had it for DTools Jenkins agent. So I'm inside of DTools right now, and I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder called Jenkins agent. Jenkins agent. Now, if you also think back, we wanted to make sure that we had available to us Java 11.0.15. And fortunately, I've already downloaded that and pre installed it on this machine. However, that version of Java 11.0.15 is not on path, nor is it set to Java Home. My default Java on this machine is actually set to Graal VM. So if I look at Java-version, when we take a look at the output from it, we can see that we have the OpenJDK version 17, and then it's specified to the Graal VM. So I'm not gonna be able to use this one, but when we set up our agent, I can specify the exact version of Java that I want to use to start up the agent process. So how are we going to be running this process? Well, since we're on Windows, what I want to do is I want to run it as a Windows service. Now, I could go through and use SC to set up the service, but we have access to a project called WinSW, and that's out on GitHub, and the link for that is down in the description. And what this allows us to do is we can run any executable as a Windows service. And the version that's available right now at the time of recording is 2.11.0. So if we come over to this link to the releases, we'll scroll down. And what I want to do is I want to download the, which version do I want to do? I want to download this x64 WinSW. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to download it into my downloads folder. 
And let's go take a look at that download. So we'll go here and we see that we have our WinSWX64. Let's take that file. I'm going to go ahead and just copy it. Let's go back over to D, Tools. Let's go back into a Jenkins agent and let's paste that file right there. Now we could leave this file named Win64, but the way that this process works is we want to go ahead and rename this file to whatever we want it to be named. And in our case, what I want to do is I want to rename this to Jenkins-Agent. Now over at the WinSW site, there are samples that you can find. There's a sample all options, sample minimal. If you go back into the repository, there is a samples folder and you can look at different options here. Down in the description of this video is a gist that will have a link off to WinSW. And also it's going to have the example configuration that I'm getting ready to give you. Now, in order to do the installation, we need to create an XML file, just like how we see these examples here. So let's go ahead and go back over into File Explorer. And let's see, we'll go to Jenkins Agent. I'm gonna create a new file, also named Jenkins-Agent, but it's going to be named Jenkins-Agent.xml. And let's go ahead and get rid of the text off of that because I messed up, but that's okay because we're there. Okay, good. Now we have an XML file. Let's go ahead and edit this file. Let's make sure we're editing it in Notepad, which we are. And let's paste in an example that we're going to use. So here is the example service configuration for what we're going to be doing. We're specifying an ID. I just have it as Jenkins ADAD agent because that's the URL for my controller. I'm giving it a full name of Jenkins agent for Jenkins colon ADAD. Do with it what you want there. Sort of the same thing for description. This service runs the agent process connected to Jenkins 8080. So for the name and the description, you'll want to be as expressive as possible. But with the ID, keep it reasonably short and don't put any spaces in it because you'll see why in a few moments. Now, the executable. This is the executable that is going to be running Java. Remember that we want to run Java 11.0.15, and we know that that process is on our folder at dtools. Here's the path to the folder, the bin directory, and then we're specifying java.exe. So that's going to be the process that we need to run. But how do I know I need to specify these things? Let's go back over to our controller. And right now I'm opening up the controller page on my agent. So I'm routing back just through the browser to my agent. Now we've talked about this executable and we know that we want to run this version of Java, but how do I know about the contents of the arguments part of the XML file? Well, let's go over to our Jenkins controller. I'm still on my agent. So one of the tests that's always good is to make sure, especially since we're going to be using WebSocket, that I can actually make an HTTP connection from my agent back over to my controller. And I put in Jenkins 8080, I got the login screen. So I know that at least at this point, I can make an 8080 connection, which is good. That's where we're going to start at. Here is our Windows agent definition. When we click on Windows agent definition, what we see here is we see a line that says run from the agent command line. But remember, we're not going to be running anything from the command line. We're setting up a service, but these are the values that we need to put in this configuration. So in our case, when it says use Java, we are specifying the fully qualified path to the Java EXE for our executable. In our case, it's the 11.0.15 version of Java. But what I want to do here is I want to go ahead and copy dash jar all the way through DTools Jenkins agent. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. What you'll notice here is that there is a parameter for JNLP URL, and that's giving us the route down to the Windows agent. There is a secret and there's a work directory. And this work directory is the one that we defined when we set up this Windows agent. So I'm going to go ahead and copy dash jar all the way through the end, including the quotes. Let's go back over to our configuration. Let's go down to the end of this. And then what we'll do is we will clear that all out and paste it in. Now, again, this XML file will be in the gist and it will have all these configurations. What you'll be doing when you configure it is ID, name, description, executable, wherever your version of Java is, and then arguments, which I copy and pasted from the setup for the agent for this Windows agent. Now, you'll also notice two other entries that are here, log mode roll, so it's gonna be rolling the logs, and then on failure, the action is restart. And we'll take a look at the service configuration once it's set up. 
Now to get started, this is really all that we need. So I'm going to go ahead and save this file and let's go ahead and quit out of it so I don't have any orphans laying around. And let's take a look again at Jenkins Agent. So inside of this folder, I have a Jenkins Agent EXE and a Jenkins Agent XML. So these two file names match each other other than the file extension, and this is important. So let's go ahead and go into a console. And this console, when it was opened, was opened up as an administrator, so run as administrator. In fact, you can see that if you look closely up here in the left-hand corner, administrator. So let's go over into that directory. So CD to tools and Jenkins agent. And if we do a listing here, what we'll see is we have our Jenkins agent exe and XML. And if we were to type Jenkins agent.exe and just do a help, then we can see that it's actually using WinSW. We just renamed the binary, but we wanted to rename it in order to match up everything as we're going through. Now, what you can see here is we have a number of commands available to us. We have install, uninstall, start, stop, stop, wait, and a handful of other commands that we can use to run this. So let's go ahead and install this service. So the way that we're going to do that is say Jenkins agent and then just type install. And because the service file, that XML file, is named the same as the exe, that's the one that's going to be loaded. So when we type install, we can see that it's installing the agent for Jenkins AD80. This is our name. This is our ID. And then we can see that it was installed successfully. Let's go over to our services. Let's size this out just a little bit. And if we go ahead and refresh this, what we're going to see is our Jenkins agent for Jenkins AD80. This is the one that we just installed. So we can see the ID, the display name, and the description. So again, you can give it a good name and a good description. Give it a really good service name, or also in our definition is an ID. Just make sure to keep it simple on yourself. No spaces in that ID. Just run it all together like I did, or maybe put a dash in it. Now, we did the installation of the service, but we didn't actually start it. So I could go ahead and click on Start, but I'm going to do it from the command line in just a moment. Let's take a look at Logon. We can see that when this was created, it was created as a local system account. The recovery, remember we said on failure, when we said to do a restart. In this case, it just went ahead and defined restart for all the different options. And then for dependencies, there are no dependencies defined. So let's go ahead and go back over and let's just go ahead and do a start from the command line. Now, when we start this, we can see that it started, but when we take a look at our directory, when we now see a lot of extra logs showing up in this directory. So if we take a look at the error log, first off, we can see, oh wait, we are unable to access the jar file agent.jar. So not only do we need to have a version of Java available, not only do we need to have the service set up, but we have to download the agent jar and make it available to us in order to use it. So let's go ahead and close this. Let's go ahead and stop the service. We'll do that from the command line again. That's great. Let's go back over to our controller. And what you'll see here is that the agent jar is actually a hyperlink. So let's go ahead and save this file. I'm gonna right click it. I'm gonna save link as. And I'm going to navigate over to my D directory tools, Jenkins agent, and I'm just gonna put it in this same directory. So we'll click on save. And then let's go back over to our folder. Now we can see we have our agent jar there. So, so far so good. Let's go back and let's start this process again. So it looks like it's showing has already started. Let's take a look at our error log one more time. And now what we can see here is it's using this is the remoting directory. In fact, let's take a look at that. We can see now within our Jenkins agent, let's close this downloads. Inside this Jenkins agent, we have a remoting directory, which has information that Jenkins needs, not us, but Jenkins needs it. We have lots of older files here, dot old, from our service configuration. Remember we had it rolling the logs. So this was a roll when it restarted. We have a Jenkins out, which has nothing in it. And we have a Jenkins agent wrapper log. And if we take a look at this, then we can see here a lot of information that's just being output to this log. So let's go ahead and go back over to our controller. Let's click on Windows. And what we can see now is that our agent is connected. So if we click on Nodes, we can see that there's a clock difference. It's six seconds off. That's not great, but it's okay. It's always best to have all your controllers and agents all syncing to the same time service. So that way you have as minimal float of time as possible. But we can see here 
that the remoting version on the controller is at 413, which is the same version that's on the agent, which is good. We want these to be the same. And then we also have the exact same versions of our JVM for both our controller and for our agent. Now let's go back a few moments to when we were looking at our service. And when we take a look at this service, and I'm going to refresh it to get the most recent values. If we take a look at logon, we can see here that it's saying logon as local system account. And this account has very escalated privileges. And we don't want our Jenkins agent process to have that level of privilege. What we want is to have a standard user account, non-administrative account, if you will, running this process. Now, I could go in here and change it to this account. And I actually already have a local standard user account on this machine. You could also use a domain account. But what we don't want to have is an account that has full administrative privileges. And that's what local system account gives us. So again, manually, I can make this change. But we can also go back into our service XML and add a few more lines and have it set up the service directly for us. So that's what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and click on Cancel. Let's go back over to our service XML. Let's go ahead and open this up. We know we're going to be making changes to this service, so I want to go ahead and stop it. And again, I could have done this through the UI, but I'm choosing to do it from the command line. And because I know that we're going to be making changes to the XML, I need to go ahead and uninstall the service. So we've stopped it. We've uninstalled it. If we go back over to our controller, we can see that the agent has now gone offline and lots of ugly logs. And we get back to the normal, this is how you need to connect. That's fine. That's exactly what we wanted. So let's go back over to our configuration in Notepad. Here, we'll just close that one up. Let's add in a few lines here. What I'm defining is a service account. Now, in my case, the domain is beta-2. That happens to be my machine name. I could choose to leave that off, but I'm just going to leave it in for completeness. My username is Jenkins Agent. And let's go take a look at this account that I have here. So I'll go to Start, Control Panel. Let's go to Add or Remove User Accounts. And you can see here that I have Jenkins Agent. That's the one I've got defined. It is a standard user. If we go in and take a look at it, I could change the password, remove the password, whatever. Again, your account doesn't have to be a local user account. It could be a domain user account. That's up to you. But what we don't want is we don't want this account to have administrative privileges from a security perspective. So let's go ahead and close this up. So I've got my domain. If it's a local account, not really necessary, but I'm going to leave it in. The user, Jenkins agent. Now password. Now you might be saying to yourself, you know what? I don't want my password in an XML file for a user on a file system. And you would be right. You don't want to do that. Now, for my example, I am going to take it out. But if you're OK with it, you could go ahead and embed the password in this so when that service is created again, the password will be passed in. I don't want to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and delete this password out of here. Now, the last thing that you do need to do is allow service logon set to true. And again, a copy of this full XML is over in the gist, the link to the gist down in the description. Let's go ahead and click on Save. Let's close this up. Let's go back to our command line. Let's go ahead and do an install. Now that we've done the install of the service, let's go back in here. I'm going to do a refresh. Let's click into the service. We can see that it's set up as automatic. When we click on Log On, we can see that it's set to Jenkins Agent. Now, the password that's here isn't the real password. It's just filling in blanks with dots. What I want to do is I want to go ahead and put in my real password, which in my case is password123. And again, I'm not concerned because it's not connected to the internet. P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D-123. I'm going to go ahead and click on Apply. Now again, this is up to you. You could have put that password and left it in the XML. In real life, I would never do that. But you can. It is possible. So we've changed the password. Let's click on OK. And this time, Let's go ahead and actually, before we start it, let's do this. This is one thing that I like to do. And this is my opinion. It's completely up to you. Anytime I do these kinds of wholesale changes, especially at the beginning of installing an agent, we have all of these log files. What I like to do is I like to go ahead and just delete all these old log files before I get started for real. So there's logs, logs, logs. Yep, let's get rid of all those. So that way, when we're starting up, I've got my agent jar, I've got my exe, I've got my XML, and the remoting folder, I'm fine leaving that. 
Let's go ahead and click on Start here. We can see that it started. We can see our log files are starting to show up. I'll take a look at error first. Now, the error log isn't necessarily errors, don't think of it that way, but it's just showing me the startup log. I'm okay with that. We can see that it appears to be started, showing connected, that's fine. If we take a look at the out log, that's empty, that's good. I take a look at the wrapper log, there's some wrapper information here. In fact, we can see starting DTools, JDK 11, Java EXE, and then here's our full path. So if you were to be running the line that was in that Windows configuration, that's what this is. And then if we go back over to our agent, click on nodes, then we can see that the Windows agent is reconnected. It's still six seconds ahead, that's okay. Still 4.13, still 11.15. At this point, our Windows agent is connected to our Linux-based Jenkins controller. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on the subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.